Hello and welcome. We've had our 2015 Tesla Model S 85D for about three and a half years now. And over that time, we've had to have various things replaced on it or repaired. Um, and those are logged in other videos that I've done each year of ownership. And I'll put a card above to uh, my most recent one of those. In the, that time, almost all of those repairs were covered under warranty. And once our car was out of warranty, we generally didn't need anything done to it or I was able to do it myself. There was this situation that started happening um, probably about a month ago where the maps said, well, here I'll show you on the screen. You'll see that there is a notice up here at the top of the screen and when you tap on that, it just says navigation is unavailable. And if we try to navigate anywhere, it just says that it won't go. Now, in about March of this year, 2022, we started having a problem where a firmware upgrade wouldn't install. And I ended up having that taken to the service center and they determined that the whole MCU needed to be replaced. Now, I, I assume there's probably some component somewhere that could have been replaced instead. Our daughter board was replaced a couple of years ago under that recall uh, when we started having problems back then with the system crashing repeatedly. So uh, in, in this case, they wanted to just replace the whole MCU and I declined at that time because I thought, well, uh, a firmware upgrade is not imperative. You know, we can get by just using the car fine and we'll just be locked into the feature set that we currently have. And for what it's worth, older Model S's like mine, the software updates are usually pretty uneventful, frankly, uh, especially for the MCU one vehicles. And it was gonna be $1,500 at that time, so I just opted out of it. Well, I'm regretting that now uh, a little bit. Uh, we got you know another six months of use out of this MCU, but now we're having this navigation issue and uh, it still won't install firmware updates. And it, they're telling us now that it's going to be $1,750. So the price has gone up $250. So I probably should have replaced it earlier this year, but you, you live and learn, right? Uh, to me, navigation is imperative. I need it to know, you know, if we go on a road trip, I need to know what the estimated arrival percentage is, and it can't calculate that if it's not navigating there and it won't even try to navigate. Initially, Tesla Service said their automated tool had diagnosed our Model S navigation problem and said it could be fixed by replacing the micro SD card that the maps are loaded on. That would have cost us $439.73, including taxes, but it would not have fixed our other key fob not working, nor the bubble in the instrument cluster or the general issues, sluggishness, etc. of the old MCU. I decided to go ahead and pay an extra $1,437 to just replace the whole MCU. There are some other advantages, of course, to getting the MCU to upgrade. Uh, we'll, I'll be illustrating those later in this video, but I didn't feel like I was willing to spend $1,500 for them or $1,750 for that matter. Our car is Autopilot 1.0. If we had a newer car with newer autopi Autopilot versions, then the MCU upgrade is an additional $500, so I'm glad we're at least saving that. This is a pretty major component of the car, right? It's the main thing that you interact with in the car. It replaces this binnacle display right here um, in front of the steering wheel because in this car, the Integra, which is what I have now, this right here is its own computer and then this is a separate computer over here. But in the new MCU2, this manages all of the um, processing and this is just a remote display. And it's actually a good thing that we are getting this replaced because you can see over here, we are having the bubbling happening which is a known issue with these cars that the, the display here starts to separate for some reason. And this started happening uh, back, I, I noticed it in August, but I think it started happening around May of 2022. Now, just as a quick update of what exactly we have in our car, I'm gonna go in here to the menu and we're gonna go into software. And then up here under the VIN number, it says additional vehicle information. And by the way, you can see the, the lines on the screen. My understanding is that the new MCU doesn't have that. It doesn't do that, it has a higher foot refresh rate. So here you can see the details of what our car is. Also down here, you can see the infotainment processor is the NVIDIA Tegra model. And so while we're here, I might as well show you the interface. You can see the, the setup here. We have the navigation here on the left side and it is not the snappiest interface for sure. Going down through this menu is not too bad. I have noticed that if you come down into the software and then you go to release notes right here, on this car, it typically takes a really long time to load this and it might actually be minutes or never load for some, some situations, I don't know. So I rarely ever try to do that. Um, there are other things in here that we never even try to use. Down here we have the web feature. This is a web browser. Never even try to load it because it just is so incredibly slow and you can see right there it just kind of crashed. Okay, now we're, we're trying to load Google. 
and there we go. So it did load, but it's just, it's excruciatingly slow. And then just looking at the menu system down here, here's the main car control. This is the music control. And then we have the sub menu of a bunch of different things through here. In the toy box, it has the um, emissions mode, romance, sketch pad, Mars, Santa, Rainbow Road, and submarine. And my understanding is that the new one has a whole lot more options than that, so we'll be reviewing that one just once we have the upgrade. And then under uh, entertainment, for games we have backgammon, chess, 2048, asteroids, centipede, super breakout, L lunar lander, and missile command. Those are all obviously the very, very old games, and the kids have fun playing some of these, but we'll see what the, the new MCU has for games in it. Pretty much that's about it. Everything else in here is, is this is the interface of it, and my understanding is the new one will have a totally different interface, so I'll show you that once we have it. Also, the firmware version that we are currently on is this right here, 10.2, and that's 2020.48.37.8. And it says your software is up to date as of today, but honestly, it, is, it hasn't been updated since March of 2022. I don't know why it says that. So in general, I'm excited to get this update. I'm, I'm excited to have a faster interface to work with and new functionality. I don't think it's worth the price. I mean, for $1,500, I could easily go buy a laptop computer that has infinitely more capabilities than what this specific does in the car. However, this is the only interface with the car, and so it is an important uh, interface, and needing uh, we need navigation. Uh, it has to work, and so uh, it's worth the upgrade for that. It's kind of an expensive price to pay, in my opinion. But for what it's worth, we haven't had to pay for virtually any maintenance on this car, aside from new tires, which is a fairly regular <laughs> expense. Um, and then I've replaced the 12 volt battery myself with an Omni battery, which you can see a card above here that I'll post about how I uh, upgraded that. But we've had to have almost nothing done to this car that we've had to pay for for repairs. And actually also driving it around, we've never had to pay for the electricity, whether it be supercharging or the charging that we do here at our house, which is for free because we have solar that's all paid off. And we uh, have have charged at friends and family's homes. I've always offered to pay for the charging at their house, but they've never taken me up on that offer. So we have banked a fair amount of money that we've saved from you know an alternative car that we could have been driving in this time and paying the gasoline and oil changes for all of that. Now one element that we are losing is the FM radio and the AM radio, but we really pretty much never use those, so that's not going to be a big deal, and I'm just going to uh, tether it with my cell phone for the radio if we ever do need it. So this is basically money that we've banked for ourselves, and we're putting it towards the MCU2 at the this point in time. All right, so I'm gonna drive down to the service center now and we'll uh, see how it goes. All right, I've arrived at the Tesla service center in Pleasant Grove, Utah. I'm gonna get the car turned in. This was my first time visiting the new Pleasant Grove service center, which had been in operation for five weeks at the time of my visit. I was pleasantly surprised at how clean, warm, bright, and spacious it was. In my experience, typically automobile shops are the opposite. When I was done talking with Cam, my service advisor, I checked out the waiting area and hailed my Uber that Cam had given me credits for. While waiting, I headed over to the adjacent showroom to check out the newest models, and of course, I had to sit in the Model S Plaid to see the yoke steering wheel for myself. During the day, I checked the app, and this is an example of the progress indication the app shows. Then at 5pm, I got this message from Cam, which wasn't a surprise because he had told me when I dropped off the car that sometimes firmware takes a long time to get properly synced with all the components of the new vehicle it's put in. I hailed an Uber and headed back to the service center. They had the loaner right in the entrance inside their garage waiting for me and I asked if I could get some things out of my car and talked to the friendly service technician for a while. So what's cool right now is your car thinks it's in California. Oh. <laughs> it thinks it's at the California factory right now. Yeah, that's cool. And it has the new uh, instrument cluster. Yes. The old one was uh, delaminating. Then the technician working on my vehicle said that firmware had just finished and he just needed to finish putting the trim back together. I went ahead and waited roughly 20 minutes and my car was done. All right, I've finished here at the service center and the car is ready to go. You can see it's nighttime now. Uh, it's 6.43, but I was here talking to them for a while and it just finished a little bit ago. And uh, I'm going to now go through the menus tomorrow and I'll show you how different the interface is. My prior firmware version was 10.2 and now it's 11.1, .1, which is quite a jump. 
Our driver profiles were supposed to move over, but they didn't, unfortunately, so I set them back up. In case you were wondering, according to Google, the MCU runs Linux. I found the streaming service wasn't signed in, so I clicked the Use Vehicle Account button, and that came back with an invalid login error. I don't have my own Slacker Radio account, so I called the service center, and Cam said he had put in a ticket for me to have this looked into. A technician remoted into my car and fixed it a couple of days later. The new games all said pending download, and there wasn't any way I could see to make it download now. The next morning they downloaded, though. We had fun exploring the new features like the Music Maker, Karaoke, and the YouTube app. Lydia is playing Beach Buggy Racing, one of the new games. <laughs> Go Lid, yeah. And I created a new profile in the car for the seating position of the seat to be all the way up, all the way forward, and the steering wheel all the way down and all the way out so the kids can sit here and use it. All right, it's been a couple of days since we uh, got the MCU upgraded and I've had a chance to go through it and explore it and kind of uh, get a feeling for what I think about it. Let's do a review of MCU2 and its remote display. Now the remote display is a little bit brighter and the color saturation is higher on it and I've also noticed that when I'm doing navigation that when it shows up over here on the left side it now shows traffic there where it didn't before. But I believe that's just the software update and actually several of the changes that I'm going to be pointing out are really just the software update. Um, initially though I, I wanted to point out just the speediness of it. It is faster but you can still see some blockiness around the edges. You can see it's not perfect. Um, not a huge criticism because it's much, much faster, um, and I'm just kind of not sure how much faster the cellular connection is here and or how much slower it is. So I'm just zooming in on random spots on the map, and you can see it takes a moment to load sometimes. In any case, uh, let's go through the, the interface differences here. So you'll see that the menu pops up really instantaneously. And I noticed that on this particular screen, which is the just the general control screen, the color of the car is correct. But here on the software screen, it's showing the color of the blue is being much brighter and it doesn't really matter too much, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, uh, you can see that as we go down through the menus, they load really quickly. And frankly, they did load quickly before as well. Uh, so that's not a huge deal. Uh, one thing I don't like, and this is probably version 11 that's causing this the software version difference they've changed the charging screen so that rather than having its own pop-up window it's now part of this uh, left hand navigation which is okay but they've shrunk the size of this car animation and more importantly the slider here on it and it is much more difficult to get it precisely where on the percent that you want and when I do it on my phone app it shows me the actual percentage why can't they show me that here I don't know it's kind of annoying so I just do it in the phone now and I've also noticed that when I put it here right on the line that looks like 80% or say 90% on my phone it's like 2% less than that so it's I don't like this there used to be a icon here that you could touch and it would open up the charge port door and now it's its own button I, okay I don't really care about that too much this is maybe a little bit easier and then the rest of these options are um, pretty much what was there before but what I will say is previously you could see the voltage and the amps here on the screen and they don't now which is really annoying I used to use that regularly and instead you have to look over here and then when you're charging it shows it along the bottom of the screen okay I, I don't want it over there I before it was in both places I don't know why they took it away from over here they have added a exclude home option for the auto present handles which I really like and that was a software update that has nothing to do with MCU2 and then let's keep going down through here and see what's different. On the trips screen, they've changed the formatting of, of this and it's much more spread out vertically. I frankly like much better how it was previously. It was much more condensed and easier to see the details in my opinion, but 
Okay, that's the core of what I found was different in the menus. Uh, let's let's go down here now. Uh, obviously, this is the software version 11 update, but we can now press and hold on these icons, and it pops up this menu, which gives us all of the various apps, and we can drag, just like on your smartphone, we can drag them down here into the My Apps area to keep our favorites right here, which is really nice customizability before we couldn't do that. Down here, you'll see the control on the uh, HVAC system is now on both sides far away from each other and if we come in here and we unsplit them then the one on the right just disappears and it stays over here on the left i'm okay with that i think that's a, a fine change but uh that's it used to be just in the stay in the middle one thing i don't like about it though is that when you unsplit them you'll notice that the heated seat option on the passenger side disappears and it only shows the driver's side. Now you could just tap on this and then it will show the passenger button right there. But I prefer if it just keeps the heated seat option there because a lot of times she wants to control, Jessica wants to control her own heated seat temperature while she's driving with me, but she doesn't care what the cabin temperature is. So I just unsplit them and then just manage it with one rather than having to um, adjust this both sides. Also, you'll see the, the software interface is different in here for camp mode, dog mode, and keep it used to be called on and a couple of other things that were different, but it's it's some, not a big deal. And then there are various options in here like schedule that are different than they were before and uh, just the overall interface is different. When we press and hold this again, you'll see that here says my apps and then over here on the right side it says recent apps. And so this is just going to constantly be showing whatever was most recently accessed. And then if we go in here to the main menu, this will show us all of the, the various apps. So this energy screen is something I use regularly as I'm sure you have seen in my YouTube videos when I'm on road trips. And if you haven't, then you go check out my channel. I've got a bunch of road trip channels and this is what I keep up on the screen as well as the trip graph, which right now I'm not on a trip, so it doesn't show anything. Uh, so I'm really glad that they haven't done away with this because I was concerned that they would. Uh, the phone app is, is not really any different and I'm not connected to my phone right now anyway. And the calendar, same thing. And then messages, I don't really use those functions terribly much myself. Theater, now this is completely new and we now have Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Tesla Tutorials. Uh, Tesla Tutorials is kind of helpful potentially. I would have been helpful when I was newer. Right now I don't, I don't think it probably has a whole lot. Probably a few little nuggets in here I don't already know. I'm just not interested in watching through all of these to find out. And me, I listen to a lot of media, podcasts, YouTube videos. I listen to everything at 2x speed and you can't do that here so I just it's unbearably you. slow so I don't want to watch these. <laughs> Coming back here to the main menu, uh, we have, oh, let's go back to theater. I really like the YouTube app because we can uh, be watching YouTube videos in here, obviously, when we're charging or something like that. But to be honest, I don't intend to use the theater feature very much or the gaming because when we are on a road trip and we are charging, we want the kids out of the car and we need to, as adults, to get out of the car as well and move. We want to be running around outside, walking at least, you know, stretching our legs. We've just been sitting in the car for a couple of hours and I don't need to stay in the car continuing to sit while I watch something on the screen. And you can't use it while you're driving. So I think it's limited usefulness and the same thing applies to everything in the theater. Uh, you know, sure, you can watch Netflix movies but same thing, uh, I, I want to get out and walk around during in my breaks when I'm not driving. I know a lot of people don't do that, and I guess there are times when we are sitting in the car and we're not stretching our legs, and in those limited use cases, then Netflix and YouTube is probably what we will use. Now, regarding the arcade, I actually feel similarly here, where if we're in the car playing games, we're still sitting, and... You know, maybe we'll just play games for fun at the house, but in general, we don't play games a lot. We try to limit our kids' screen time, so I think the usefulness of these games is limited. It's kind of a cool thing to have. We haven't actually tried any of them with the controllers yet because we don't have a controller, uh, but we'll get one at some point and test them out, but I don't, I don't feel like the, the, these are worth... For me, it's not worth spending a lot of money on these games. And then over here in the toy box really it just changed the interface and it's all of the same things that we had previously so not really impactful here in the toy box. Now the browser over here is much snappier and more useful so for instance let's say I want to go to Teslify so I can look up my driving stats on a road trip or something I don't know. 
it's faster. I mean, before it didn't work at all, and now it does load. But you can see it still is limited by the speed of your internet connection. And once again, up here on LTE, it's indicating three bars or two bars now. So it's really not terribly speedy at the moment for our LTE connection. But the browser isn't, I think, the limitation because it's actually loading the screens eventually. Now, it does have a bunch more options for streaming music services like Spotify, uh, TuneIn, Tidal, Apple Music, some of those we didn't have before. But we don't have a subscription for any of those services, so I am just going to stick to the regular streaming service that the car has an account for. And now you can see it loads just fine without any advertisements, which was really annoying when I was trying to use TuneIn or any of the others. The advertisements were really heavy, like almost every song, in between each song, that was having an ad play. One thing that I really like is the voice command button is way more responsive than it used to be. So as an example, I can push this now and say, Play. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. And you can see that it transcribed that much more quickly than it would have previously. And then if I come over here to the music app, it searches for an app, a song, and it brings up the song that matches what I wanted. What I also like is I can come in here and click on this button right here that is the equalizer, and then I can go down to uh, sources and I can turn off the options that I don't intend to use, which in my case would be these four. And so I will keep the Bluetooth, streaming, and karaoke, because the kids really like the karaoke. And then when I do that, I click on this drop-down menu and it limits it to just those, and so I don't have as much clutter on my screen. So I really like the customizability of that, as well as the ability to rearrange the icons along the bottom of the screen. Those are really helpful. One of my favorite changes that is probably just from software update uh, to going to version 11 is that we can now change the amps that the car is charging on the phone before we could only do it in the car. And this is really helpful for me because I charge my car from my RV through the solar system on the roof of it, and I'm often changing the amperage to try to match the sun and before I was doing it through the Juicebox Pro 40 web interface which I can still do but now I can also do it here in the web app uh, which means I can use the mobile connector and not just the Juicebox to do it so that's cool uh, also it shows the current uh, music that is playing right now in the car and that didn't show up before and then this schedule option is new you had to do that in the car previously and now it can be done in the app uh, this security and drivers is I believe also new and that is allowing us to adjust these settings without being in the car and then one last thing that's really cool is this charge stats and this wasn't in there at all before in the car or in the app and it is now showing the usage patterns of charging specifically and where you're charging and how much it costs it uh, allows you to input in the settings what your charge parameters are, what your cost per kilowatt hour is, etc. I put mine at, I think, 11 cents. And so that is a cool thing that it now shows. In summary, do I feel like the MCU2 upgrade is worth the price that they charge for it? And I still don't think the answer is yes on that. The games are cool, the theater is cool, but I can do both of those things on my phone or a laptop computer or something like that. And I don't need them to be in the car. It's cool to have in the car, just I don't need it there, so I'm not willing to spend very much money for it. And then the snappiness and the, the speed, that was all, all that's convenient, but it worked before. It was just, you had to be a little bit more patient. Really for me, the, the thing was that obviously navigation stopped working and I have to have that on road trips. And there were some other problems that we were having and you know, the key fob had stopped working and things like that. So it's nice to have all of that work correctly. And so I see this as being more of a repair that we had to pay you know, like $1,800 for rather than an upgrade that we chose to do and spend that money on. It's kind of, we were forced to do it and we had some bonus things that happened along the way. With that, I hope this has been helpful seeing what it was like uh, upgrading to MCU2 for us. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. I want a hippopotamus will do. No crocodile, no rhinoceros. So now it's playing just the music and no words. It's waiting for you to sing it. You gotta sing it with the words. This is called karaoke. Because it's, it's karaoke in the car. Oh. <laughs>